Hey there, my name is Drew Brashler, and in this video, I purchased an ex Dante card. I'm so excited about this thing. I actually had to buy it used because they're actually pretty hard to find new. Um, but I'm going to show you how to get this installed on your Behringer X32, how to configure it, and how to get it working with anything that's on a Dante network. Now, if you're brand new to my channel, I'm all about helping you feel more confident in your production gear no matter where you're starting from. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, this is the X Dante card. And there is a primary and a secondary port on this, which lets us connect to our Dante network. And if we look at the rest of the card, we can see our Brooklyn 2 chip that's in here, which is our Dante card. And then we also have our standard expansion port connector on the back of this. And so if we want to install this on the Behringer X32, all we have to do is remove the two screws from the current card that's on your X32 pull the old card out, put this one in place, and replace those two screws. Now, in this case, if we go to Setup and tab all the way over to Card, we can see that I have my X Live card. So I will have to replace my X Live card with this X Dante card if I'm wanting to use the Dante network on this console. But there's actually some really cool benefits of the Dante network with getting our Behringer X32 on it. One major benefit of the Dante network is that almost every professional console out there has the capability of having connectivity with Dante, which Dante is basically audio over IP. So it gives us the ability of having multiple channels of audio over a network cable, and that network cable can be shared with other data on that same network. I would be careful with that, but you can share, say, internet access over your Dante network or computer connectivity over that same Dante network. So you can have, say, a computer that is playing your tracks up on stage for those churches that use Ableton for your multi-track or backing tracks playback. Instead of having an audio interface that maybe has eight or 16 analog outputs, you can simply replace all of those analog connections with one network cable. And then you just basically take that network cable, plug it into the computer, and then plug it into the primary port here on the X Dante card, and then you can have all of your multi-tracks stay digital the entire way. And then when it comes time to clean up, instead of cleaning up 16 channels or eight channels of audio lines, you only have to clean up one Cat5 line. Another example that's really beneficial on the Dante network is there are wireless receivers for wireless microphones that have Dante built into them. Two prime examples would be the Shure ULXD or the Shure Axiant. Both of these have Dante directly in on the receivers. So you can take your wireless microphone, give it to your singer, and then with that wireless microphone receiver, keep it Dante and digital over the entire path to the X32. And this can actually reduce latency in some cases because you have less analog to digital and digital to analog conversions that are happening, which can reduce some time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove those two screws on the back of my expansion card that's currently on my X32. I'm going to remove that card, put this one in place of it, and then put those two screws back in. So first thing I'm going to do is just turn off the console, and then I'm actually going to do that, and then I'll be right back. Once we've finished installing that card, just go ahead and turn your console back on. Now, there's multiple ports on this card, remember. Now, one really cool function of this is being able to have the same network for all of your audio, which in my last video, I was showing you how to get our network set up for running our wireless connections, like an iPad or a phone for mixing monitors or for mixing your audio. And so there's multiple ports on this card, and there's also a Ethernet port on the back of the console for remote control. And so what you can do is you can take a network cable, plug the secondary port into the Ethernet port of the Behringer X32, and that way, any of your computers or wireless devices, which Dante does not pass over wireless, so that's one thing to keep in note, but any of your wireless devices that are connected to that console could then 
remote control the X32. So when we're getting our network connections connected up, the one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with getting my network passing through the Dante card to the console. So I'm just going to take a normal Cat5 cable here, and I'm going to plug the secondary port into the Ethernet port of the X32. So I'm going to do that right now. Now, at its most basic level, all we have to do is take an Ethernet connection from another Dante device, plug it into the primary port, and we now have a Dante connection between the two. But you do need to have the ability of controlling and configuring the Dante card and that controlling is done outside of the console. So you do need to download Dante Controller from the Audinate site. So you do need to go download Dante Controller, which is a free program that you can download. And that is what we actually make our pairing connections between any Dante devices and our X32. So you could technically take our cable and plug it directly from the primary port to a computer, say your Ableton rig, have Dante controller on that Ableton rig and we can then make those connections. But if we want to be able to make this a lot easier on ourselves, instead of just using one cable, let's take this cable and then put in a switch. Now, you do need to have a network switch that is certified for Dante, which, I mean, there's a lot of them out there. In my case, I'm gonna be using this Netgear switch, which is just a gigabit ethernet switch. And so I'm going to take this switch, plug it in, plug my cable from the primary port into this, and then I'm going to then take my computer and plug it into this network switch. Now, this does not need to be a router. It can just be a dumb switch, so an unmanaged switch, because the way that Dante works is it doesn't really care about the IP addresses. Once they are plugged in, they will communicate as long as they are all set to the same sample rate. So in my case, my audio console is configured to uh, 48 kilohertz, and so that means that the expansion card is also 48 kilohertz. So you couldn't have a 96 kilohertz Dante device talking to a 48 kilohertz Dante device. You would have to keep all of the sample rates the same for them to show up in the Dante controller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this plugged in and connected into the back of my console, and then I'm going to grab my computer and get that connected into this switch as well. Okay, so I have my computer now plugged into this network switch that I have over here, and I have that plugged into the console. And so there's a couple things that we need to do to get the clock working for all of this setup and make sure that it is the most stable setup that we can get. The first thing that we want to do is we want to set our clock source of the X32 to be from the expansion card, as we want the clock source coming from the Dante network, not from the X32. And that Dante network could be from this Dante card that we have on the back of the console, but we're just going to let the Dante network take care of the Dante network master, and then we are going to make sure that this is set to external card for our sync. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down and click expansion card for our clock. And so that we can see now that we have green on the Dante card, green on our 48K for our console, and green on my DL32 that I have connected into this console as well. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to go over to the computer in Dante Controller. So we have Dante Controller right here, and what we have is our receivers and our transmitters. Now, this isn't that fancy right now because we only have one thing on our network, but if we go to device view, we can actually see a couple things. So we're going to go and click on my Dante card that I have here, and we can see our receive channels. We can see our transmit channels. Now, receive would be I want to receive something from a device that's on the network onto channel one and two and three and four. So if I had, say, some wireless receivers, I could go ahead and pull those channels into these, and then my four channels would show up as a card input to the console. We can then transmit from our card or our X32 to anything on the Dante network. We can see status. 
latency, we have device configuration, so you can, this is where you can change the name. If you do change the name, it does interrupt any connections to the card, so you will need to remake any of those connections once you change the name. So I would suggest changing the name early in the install process. You can also see network config and a AES67 config that I'm not gonna be talking about. So on our secondary port, we have this Dante redundancy. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this set to switched. Now, when that is set to switched, that enables the console to have an IP network connection through the Dante card, through the Dante network. And that way, anything that you plug into the Dante network, you can put the X32 app, say X32 Edit, or if you had an iPad connected to your Dante network that was maybe wireless, you could then control your X32 through the Dante network. Now again, Dante does not transmit wireless. It does not do wireless network audio. So that is one downside of Dante, is we have to have it be an Ethernet connection. So. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to close that and I'm going to open up a thing called Dante Virtual Sound Card. And so what Dante Virtual Sound Card is going to enable me to do is I am going to be able to have my computer send eight audio channels out or all the way up to 64 channels on this Dante network. So I'm going to select eight by eight, and now we can see that my MacBook Pro six core is sitting on the Dante network. So now that I have two things on the network here, I can actually go and start making connections as far as the audio goes. So one thing that I could do is I could go and open up this X32 and open up my MacBook, and I can go and connect these things. So if I was wanting to connect one and two to maybe play some audio from this computer onto the X32, I would just simply go and select these two connections. And what this is saying is that I am sending, transmitting from my MacBook to input one on the Dante card. Again, this is transmitting out to and going into Dante and then connecting on the input of this card, which would show up on my console. So this is where we can then put these as channels on the X32. Now, if I was wanting to multi-track record from the Dante card to my computer, then what I would want to do is I would want to go and select the channels that I want to record here. Now, we can see that I only have eight, so if I was wanting to multi-track all 32, I would need to go ahead and open up more. But in this case, I'm going to only record the first eight channels of the X32. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Smart. And I'm going to get some noise coming out of this device. So we have Dante Virtual Sound Card inside of Smart. And I'm going to go and send pink noise out my Dante Virtual Sound Card output one and two. And I can go ahead and turn those on. So now that I have audio sending out in pink noise out of Smart, I can actually go into my Dante controller, go to device view, and I can go ahead and select my X32. Now, if I do that, I can actually see that it is receiving signal from my computer. If I was to go ahead and turn off that noise and go back to Dante Controller, I would see that there's no signal. So using the device view on that is actually a pretty cool feature. So we can go ahead and turn this noise back on and let's actually go over to the X32 and get this routed into the console. Now, I'm gonna actually utilize my user routing for this. So let's go ahead and go to routing and I'm gonna change my local one through eight to be user in one through eight. Now, the next thing I'll do is page all the way over until we get to user, and this is where I will take in my card inputs one and two on my user in, and then we just are going to finish out them being from local in. So three is three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And so what we can now see is that we have noise coming in on my 
console right here. So I have card one and card two showing up here. And if I go over to my computer and I press stop on the noise generator, we will see that the noise has disappeared. That's as simple as it is for getting Dante set up with your Behringer X32. So there's some other really cool things that we can do on the Dante network, like using Waves Super Rack native. You can actually send out audio from your console to Dante Virtual Sound Card, to Waves on your computer, and then bring it back through Dante Virtual Sound Card back to your X32, and we can process our audio that way. Additionally, one cool way of doing this is if you do happen to have that Shure ULXD or Shure Accent, you can take directly off the receivers, put it into waves on your computer, take out waves on our Dante virtual sound card, put it into the X32 via Dante, and then we can actually have that processing before it even hits the console, which is pretty cool and reduces some latency. So if you do happen to have any questions, feel free to post in the comment section below, and if you happen to to have a couple videos that you want me to make with this Dante card or really any other thing, please put it in the comment section below as I'm always looking through those comments to find videos that are gonna be helpful for you. If you haven't considered becoming a member, please do as it's one way to financially give back to me and just say thank you and help support me and this channel for making more videos for you. Make sure to check out DrewBrashler.com or subscribe to my channel, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much.